We're back working on our Yanmar today. I figured I'd start outside so you get a better look at the machine we've got here. This is uh, February 2023. I bought this machine last summer. This is the second machine we've had. I had an IHI 28J um, that was a little bit smaller, about a ton smaller machine. Um, I sold that and got this one. This one's a little bit bigger, a little more capable. Uh, we'll probably be doing a, a, some, a septic system with this and some other stuff, some, some uh, foundations and a few other things for personal use only, mostly. This machine, uh, this is kind of a, it's a used machine. It's about a 2004. Um, I picked this up uh, on the used market, obviously. This came, uh, it's a uh, return to a dealer, I believe a trade-in, essentially. Um, it's got about 5,000 hours on it. 5,000 hours for a machine like this is probably half its life or so. You can expect 10 to 12,000 hours maybe out of one of these. Um, you saw me change the seals. We did the bucket. Uh, we're going to put a hydraulic thumb on it today, at least start on it. Um, but this is a machine that's within the grasp of a homeowner. This is, you know, under 20,000, something like that. You can get into one of these things. Um, new, this machine today, you're looking at 70, 75. So it's kind of, kind of out of the realm for the home gamer. But, but for somebody who's got a little bit of land, wants to build some roads, you know, do some ditches, um, dig a septic for your buddy, whatever. That kind of stuff, this machine's about perfect. And with the thumb, it makes them much more capable. They're a lot handier. They can move logs. They can, you know, pick up essentially anything um, and load on a trailer. So very handy for that. We do a little bit of firewood here in our shop. So that's kind of what we're doing today. Um, this machine was owned by a building contractor and he had installed a thumb that had some well, some attachment points welded directly to the stick. So we're going to cut all that off. Our thumb is a pin mount, which is going to go in that, that pin right there on the stick. Um, and it will uh, swivel from there. And then the cylinder will come up to here. We'll have a weld point up in here somewhere. Um, and that will pull the, retract the thumb when we don't need it. My other machine had a manual thumb. Um, it was great, very handy to have a thumb, but a manual thumb is kind of a pain. You're, you know, it's a hundred pound piece of steel you're taking on and off every time you don't want it. It gets in the way of the bucket when you're digging, so you can't really have the thumb on when you're digging. Um, a hydraulic thumb is much, much handier. But uh, a few other things we've done on this, we've changed engine oil, hydraulic oil, um, like I said, seals, uh, drive motor oil we've checked. Um, you know, air filter, kind of done the regular, the regular tune up for this. And uh, probably once I get this thumb on, the only thing we'll really lack is paint. Um, so paint for these, this is a Yanmar, and the paint for these is pretty pricey. Um, I, you know, not worth what you're paying for. So I uh, took a few pieces off that didn't have faded paint and um, I will take that into uh, Napa, and they have a good commercial uh, coating paint um, that's got hardener and reducer you can add and spray with a gun. And they should be able to match all my colors. And I essentially, I need this yellow, I need the green, and then there's this gray color on the counterweight and the undercarriage um, that we'll get as well. So, and I think you can get a sticker kit for these pretty reasonable, 150 bucks or so. The tracks on this are probably 50%. Eh, um, tracks aren't a huge, a huge issue for these. I mean, you really shouldn't shouldn't base your purchase on questionable tracks. I mean, you can get new tracks for a grand a piece. I mean, they're not they're not out of the realm of possibility to pick up to to make it more usable. So, big thing with these is make sure your motor's good. You know, you don't want something that's smoking and running funny. Um, what we found in these is the wiring harnesses. We go through those and check them. The diesel engine vibrates a lot and uh, vibrates the wiring harnesses and these become chafed. And uh, I think the last one we took apart, it had probably 20, 15 or 20 separate spots where the, the wires were totally worn through on metal components and it was shorting out, you know, dead shorts and all sorts of issues. So wiring harness is a big thing to check. 
and then uh, and then your fluids and you're pretty much good you know some of the pricey things that can go are a drive motor you know drive motors two grand or 2500 so and make sure it drives okay I got the covers off of ours because I was just checking those hoses and fluid filming the inside of these anywhere I can get on these machines I fluid film to uh, keep them from rusting cutting edge is good on that blade so we don't need to mess with that um, once we get this this uh, this thumb on and some paint should be a good uh, should be a good homeowner grade machine should last me for years until uh, I decide to buy something bigger which I probably won't do. All right, we'll get inside. Uh, it's a little darker in there. I thought it started out here, and uh, we'll cut those those old attachment points off and uh, get working on the pin for that thumb. We've got it inside now. I did notice one thing just now that I didn't notice before. It's kind of a cool feature. Um, the hydraulic thumb will hook to these ports here. These are essentially the auxiliary hydraulics. And uh, I didn't really want to spend the money on quick coupler fittings, um, you know, to, to take it on and off because I'm essentially just going to leave it on the machine. Um, and fittings, hydraulic fittings, quick coupler fittings, as you, as you, you guys know, um, they're pricey. I mean, you could spend a hundred bucks just on fittings to get this thing to quick couple attached. So these are actually a shut off. It's just kind of a valve. And uh, I think I can just hook right into that, that uh, hose pipe thread on that and uh, directly uh, have my uh, hydraulic hoses go right to the thumb and it'll save me some quick couplers uh, this things here I think I'll cut off with a grinder not crazy about torching stuff this close to cylinders and various other things I might have to torch some of it off but uh, I like to grind as much as I can All right, we'll uh, work on grinding that off and bring it back when we're done. One down, one to go. They did add another plate on top of the stick for that old thumb, and I will probably leave that on to provide a little more strength. It's that plate right there, you can see the seam. But we'll leave that on so we don't get into the stick. And uh, I will hit all this bare metal with some self-etching primer when we're done until we get some paint on it. But just got to deal with that bottom one now. We got our old parts off here down to clean steel. I did a quick degrease and paint with some self-etching primer. So I think we're good there. This is the thumb that we're putting on, and it goes into this pin right here. And what it does is it it goes around that entire knuckle. So I took the calipers and I kind of came up with a quick. My inside calipers wouldn't quite reach, but I got a set of outsides that are pretty close. So I think that's going to equate to about a quarter inch spacer on each side or so. Um, this thumb comes with spacers, but they're kind of, kind of hokey. They're torch cut. I mean, they would work, but uh, I have the capability to uh, make some more precise ones on the lathe, so I'll probably do that. And then uh, this had an extra plate put on the outside of it for strengthening. I think for that old thumb that they had. My only concern is when we put our cylinder on here, which hooks into this boss and then gets welded up onto here and I'm hoping that the end of that does not hit at that joint and complicate things. I think it should be up here according to my measurements somewhere up in here so that's what we're hoping for and uh, I'll probably pull that pin get that on there make a measurement for a couple of spacers and I think they're uh, going to be about a quarter of an inch thick on each side. And I'm pretty sure I have some uh, larger steel. Some two and a half, three inch stuff that I can make those spacers out of. And we'll do that over here on our, uh, on our early 1940s LeBlanc lathe. From the World War II era. 19 incher. She's a hog. And she can uh, easily, easily make those... Uh, 
those parts. So that's what we'll do. Okay, we're in the process of making our bushings now. We're just facing off a piece of bronze. I couldn't find any steel, but I think bronze will work good. We need a quarter of an inch on each side of that, that uh, yoke. So I'll face this off. I'll turn the outside down to 250. Uh, two and a half inches is the outside diameter. The inside diameter is uh, one and a half inches. And the thickness is about a quarter inch, and I need two of them. So I'll bring you back when we get closer. Just facing that off. Now we're boring out the bushing. Gotta get it to an inch and a half. We're finished with our two spacers. About a quarter inch each width. Probably much more precise than is necessary, but if you can do it, why not do it? They're bronze, not steel, but I think they should hold up fine. If anything, they won't rust, and there's not much, not much side-to-side -side pressure on that, uh, on that thumb, so it should be okay. We got our spacers on. We put our pin in. Everything went, went together well. There's a few O-rings that I have to get for it, um, but we are temporarily got it together. And then we put the cylinder on and measured that out to see exactly where that went and then cleaned the paint off. We just ground the paint off, get it ready to tack on there, we'll weld that on right there. What you want to do with these is put them until they hit, bring the thumb back until it hits, and then pull the cylinder, extend the cylinder out another three quarters of an inch or so so your cylinder doesn't bottom out every time you, you expand. What you want it to do is you want it to hit here. You want your thumb to hit your stick first before before your cylinder bottoms out. And they actually make a make a pad for that. Uh, where is that? They make a small. I have it here somewhere. They make a small pad that you weld on um, down in here where that hits. But we actually have that extra plate that was on there, so that's going to provide kind of a bumper for that that thumb when it hits it. You can see it where it hits down in there. But it's got that double plate there so we should be fine. So what we have to do now is tack this here and uh, we'll get that welded up and then we'll put the bucket on and see where the uh, fingers mesh with the bucket teeth. It looks from our preliminary measurements that it's going to be fine. So getting closer. And then I'll have to get uh, hydraulic hoses. We'll measure up for those. I don't have them yet, but I will uh, measure up for those and order those. And put those on. All right, we got it on. This is what it's supposed to look like. It matches perfectly. The two teeth go between the outside teeth, which is exactly what you want. We have it all put back together. There's a couple of O-rings that go in the... Uh, the uh, quick cup other, so we won't put that together fully right now, um, but I'll get those O-rings. I'll get uh, a couple of hoses, and we'll put it together probably next weekend. My son welded on the top piece here. He's a little welder, a little better welder than I am, but it looks good. But it meshes exactly the way it's supposed to. And uh, that'll be a really nice thumb that'll outlast me. That's uh, that's really heavy duty. Again, it's a Soulsby. Really nice piece. Uh, I think all the the uh, the actual claws are one inch flat bar, one inch plate. Very happy with that. I think uh, I'll probably publish this video, and then uh, what I'll do is I'll next weekend we'll put those hoses on. And uh, and then we'll show us picking some stuff up with it, using it a little bit. That'll be another video, like a part two. Okay. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Here's a shot of it outside where you can see it a little better. We measured all the fittings up for the hoses, and I'll order those. It's, uh, it's BSP... 
on the excavator and uh, the the cylinder has uh, store fittings I think they're called they're uh, um, an o-ring on the uh, on the outside of it so it's got a flange and an o-ring in there but that's essentially what it's supposed to look like when you're picking up stuff now get those hoses on and we'll do a video of using it if we get some warmer weather it's pretty freaking cold here in uh, New York State right now okay that's part one